For 20 years, Susie Bloody has traveled the world, unraveling mysteries. Perhaps the greatest of the universe's many mysteries centers around the image of God. Why do representations of the Christian divine all look more or less like this one? This is Michelangelo's celebrated masterpiece, featuring God breathing life into Adam, the first man. God also has the body of a man, that is, a white man, with his trademark white beard. But what if God were not a white male? In fact, as Susie Bloody tells us, La realtà è che Dio è nato donna. In antiquity, before man had taken the top job in the Western world's hierarchy, representations of God were not always muscular and bearded. Take the female gods that were worshipped in the Mediterranean. Represented in the form of the mother goddess, these female gods had very specific personalities. The goddess Inanna was adored in various regions of the Mesopotamian East Semitic and has been compared to two other goddesses, the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Sumerian goddess Inanna. Inanna was the epitome of the diva. Even with one leg resting on a lion. Like every diva, her arms are raised to the sky. I was sent by the powerful one, and I have come for the ones that reflect themselves in me. I am compassionate and I am cruel, do not fear your obedience to me. Do not love my self-control. When I am weak, do not abandon me. And do not fear my power. But this all-powerful figure was ultimately dethroned. Where she had been adored and worshipped, she was shunned and despised. Inanna fell from her divine pedestal to resemble this figure on the tarot card. We need another kind of logic, because the logic of the phallus can only fail. What other kind of logic can we think of? Well, let's try something new. Another part of the body, of the woman's body, that won't fail us. What about the breast? Breasts are the part of the female body that most generously produce life for another human being. The logic of the breast can produce generous sustenance, for the breast is a source of milk and of life, and provides unconditionally and selflessly. This isn't necessarily a far-off utopia. Matrilineal societies have always existed, and one of the most famous of these that still exists today is the Mozuo. They live in China's Yunnan and Sichuan provinces near the Tibetan border. In Mozuo society, women make all the decisions, which crops to plant, when to harvest. When a child is born, they stay in the house of their mother. Mozuo children take the mother's surname, and it is the youngest female that inherits. Like many matrilineal societies, women get their own rooms when they come of age, where they can receive their male lovers. 
Marriage is not a mozior institution. So no need to move in with your husband or wife or mother-in-law and no need for divorce. Where the logic of the phallus is aggressive and militaristic, encouraging disputes to be resolved with warfare, the female body is the guardian of life. We need the logic of the breast now, more than ever, to better serve a world in crisis.